Hello fellow book lovers, my name is Giselle and welcome to the Adventures of Jizz. Today's video is going to be a recent reads kind of video. I am going to not just be counting the books I read in April, I'm going to be counting the books I've read since the 30th of March. I know that's a little bit weird, but I had been in a major book slump since about the middle of January and the 30th of March is the day that my book slump ended. So let's get started with the recent reads video. So the first book that I read, which I read on the 30th of March, was Geekerella by Ashley Parson and I gave Geekerella a 4 out of 5 stars. Now I have read the second book in the, I think it's called Excelsior Con series, but it is just so geeky and lovely and they are geeky modern day retellings of fairy tales. So the first one is a Cinderella retelling and the second one was Princess and the Pauper retelling. This book is just so utterly adorable and cute and so sweet. I really really love the setting especially Excelsior Con. It is this amazing comic-con style convention where a bunch of geeks just get together, share their love for fandoms and geekiness and it really shows the amazing feelings that people feel towards these fandoms and these stories that have really changed their lives. As much as I loved Geekerella, I do think that the second book was better and just had stronger characters but I did thoroughly enjoy Gigarella. It was seriously seriously fun. Next up on the 31st of March I read The Shadows Between Us by Trisha Levenseller and I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. I spoke about this story in my 24 hour reading vlog which I will leave the card up here for you to go follow and I first started listening to this on audiobook. I just kind of got so into the book. I bought myself an ebook copy and I just carried on reading it throughout the day. It was so good. I really really enjoyed it. Our main character Alessandra is really feisty and ambitious and she is just not afraid to do what she needs to do in order to get what she wants. The majority of the story is set at court and I really love the court intrigue and the court drama. Our main characters are very morally grey or just in general aren't good people at all. However, we still root for her and it's so strange to root for these horrible, horrible characters because I just wanted them to get what they wanted. And we also have really interesting magical elements which specifically come in with the Shadow King which is the king that Alessandra is trying to woo and marry. So this is just a fantastic story. I really, really enjoyed it. The magic was really interesting. I quite like the concept behind it. Alessandra just showed over and over again that she is willing to do anything to get what she wants and I really love that unapologetically ambitious vibes of this character. One particular thing that really stuck out to me was the way that female sexuality and female empowerment is explored and there are some amazing quotes but here is one that I will read to you. It says, the poet can say whatever they damn like a woman's worth is not decided by what's between her legs, but what is in her mind. And I'm all for that because that is an amazing quote and I absolutely love these tidbits that we see throughout the story. And the next three books that I read are all part of a series and that is the Shatter Me series. So I read all three of these books one after the other and they are so, so good. I love this series so much. I'm so obsessed. So I read the first book on the 31st of March and I gave Shatter Me a four out of five stars. I really, really loved the style of writing in this series. It's very unique and so interesting the way that Tahira Murphy really gets into the mind of Juliet and Juliet's quite broken and a little unstable at the beginning of the series. Tahira Murphy really shows us how Juliet is thinking through the way that she writes. She works quite well with punctuation and she also does this crossing out thing. I don't know if you can see that. The writing is some of the most unique writing I've seen in a long, long time in young adult fantasy or dystopian. Here the writing really added to the story itself. I finished this, I was completely in love and I immediately moved on to Unravel Me. Now Unravel Me, I gave a full five out of five stars because it is such a good book. The writing 
is just as amazing and beautiful as Shatami was. The plot was absolutely fantastic. I was on the edge of my seat and I think it was definitely the plot and the character growth from not just Juliet but some other characters as well that really really added intrigue and amazing drama to the story. That is why Unravel Me so far has been my favorite book in the series. There are so many little things in this second book that really made it a full five out of five stars. And then I read Ignite Me. The story is just so absolutely fantastic and so intriguing and it completely pulled me in. This world is amazing. I think the characters are definitely some of the most interesting and intriguing characters. I gave Ignite Me a 4.75 out of 5 stars. The ending was definitely what brought this down just that tiny, tiny little bit. The entire series is leading up to this major intense ending and it was quite anticlimactic because it happens so quickly I think it happens within like 20 to 30 pages and I really wanted some more because we had this three book build up towards this climax and this ending and it was just there it happened and it happened so fast and then it was over and it was over and I was like wow that was really it just happened and I just I just want to like I just want to end the Shatter Me section with saying that Warner is my new bookish boyfriend because I have a lot of them but he has been added to the list officially. <laughs> Next up I read a book that I have been wanting to read forever and that is Daughter of the Pirate King by Trisha Levenseller. I ended up giving this a four out of five stars. It was just such a good good story. It was so fun and the pirate aesthetic of it was definitely one of the biggest attractions for me and I really really enjoyed that. I absolutely love the main character Alossa. She is extremely clever so she gets sent on a mission by her father and she gets captured by this other pirate ship and she is kept in their brig and we have this amazing amazing character Raiden and he's sent to kind of question her and try and get information out of her but boy is it a very complicated and interesting story. There are also some absolutely fantastic moments where I was like on the edge of my seat just waiting to see what happens next. This book did not disappoint. It did however set up quite a lot for the following book so we didn't have a lot of conclusions within the first one because it is part of a duology which is why this only got a 4 out of 5 stars and not a full 5 out of 5 stars. Although this is a really really fun read there weren't a ton of surprises or twists and turns however there were some amazing amazing things that happened and we learned some great things that really set the world up for the following book. Whilst I'm talking about the first book I might as well talk about the second one and that is Daughter of the Siren Queen also by Trisha Levenseller. Now this one I gave a full 5 out of 5 star rating. This book was absolutely so so brilliant and Wow, there was just so much world building. It really expanded on some of the side characters and we really got to know some of the past stories and some of the things that really drive some of the crew on the ship. Once again, Alasa goes through some major changes in this book. We see her really grow into herself and accept who she is. It is absolutely such a brilliant book and I can't say much without spoiling anything, which is why I'm being so vague. But the plot of the second book was so, so good and definitely ended on such a great note. I loved this book from the first word and I cannot tell you how much I love this genre and this style of book. And the next book that I read was The Sleeper and the Spindle by Neil Gaiman and it is illustrated by Chris Rydell. I ended up giving it a four and a half out of five stars. This is a graphic novel style short story. The one thing that really stuck out to me are the absolutely stunning illustrations. So the illustrations are absolutely stunning and the story is a little bit of a twist on the usual fairy tales that we know. So we have a land that is cursed by a witch to fall asleep forever and in that aspect we follow the Sleeping Beauty fairy tale and we also have the heroine of the story and she is the queen of a neighboring kingdom and she goes to this sleeping kingdom in order to try and save the people. And I really like that both the heroine and the villain are really strong female characters. It is such a unique and stunning story and I just really really enjoyed it. Next up I read A Fire and Bone by Rachel A. Marks and this is a book that was provided to me by NetGalley. I gave Fire and Bone a 
three and a half out of five stars. This is basically an urban paranormal fantasy and we follow a girl who is thrust into this world of demigods and mythical creatures. I'm really stuck on my opinion about this one because I stayed up into the late hours of the night reading this book because I genuinely thought it was a really enjoyable read. The plot was really really good. The two characters that we follow however were my biggest letdown because I did not like either of them much. On one hand we have Sage who is the main protagonist of the story. She can be kind of annoying sometimes and I really didn't like that about her. <laughs> and we also have her counterpart who is the male who's supposed to be teaching her about this world. His name is Phelan and I just did not like him. Even though the plot was fantastic and while it was such a good story, I think it was definitely the characters that really really disappointed me quite a lot. There are two characters however that I did really like and they are side characters. <laughs> so it is Lelokin who is the crazy old man who lives in the forest. He is just absolutely insane but still brilliantly clever underneath all of his craziness. He reminds me a little bit of the wizard Radagast from Lord of the Rings. The other character I really liked was the Dark Prince. Kieran and he's all dark and broody and so mysterious and even though the first time we meet him I'm like wow he's a bad bad person I was so okay with it. <laughs> the fact that my two favorite characters were side characters and Kieran does play quite an important role in this book and towards the end we really see that the next book I think I would really enjoy but at the same time the characters just weren't good enough for me which I'm really sad about because I really enjoyed the story and the plot and oh it was so exciting and intriguing and like I said I could not put this book down. The writing was easy and I really enjoyed the world and the world building. Even though I did not like the story the ending was really good and it left me kind of wanting to read the second book but let me see if I ever actually get there. If I do I think I will really really enjoy it. And the next book that I finished in April was one that is very close to my heart and that is Clockwork Princess. I absolutely adored the first two books in the series but as soon as I finished A Clockwork Prince which is the second book I stopped reading because I didn't want the series to end. I'd seen a lot of spoilers and I knew what was going to happen. There were a lot of emotions around this series and I just didn't want to cry. At the end of last year, beginning of this year, I picked up Clockwork Princess and I read up until about 300 pages and I had about 150 pages left. And then I stopped again because I had cried for a majority of this book already. My poor, poor heart cannot deal with my feelings around this series and this specific book. As I said, I've seen spoilers for the ending and I knew how it would end. But wow, people really know how to keep a secret because the epilogue was the biggest surprise. I did not expect that to happen. I was so completely blown away. I was first really sad, crying, like sobbing, holding myself together, crying. And then I was happy crying, but crying because it was ending and there was just so many tears because of this book. The thing that really makes this series so impactful are definitely the characters I cannot even explain the love I have for the characters in this series. They're just all so close to my heart, especially Tessa, Jem and Will. The three of them will forever just be in my heart and I will always love them. <laughs> and I'm tearing up a little bit but it's fine. <laughs> I'm fine. Like I said, the ending of this was so good. It really wrapped up the series so well. And even though I was expecting it, I did not think it would be <laughs> that good. And I did not expect it <laughs> to hit me so hard. <laughs> I'm getting emotional so I'm gonna stop talking about this book but yes if you haven't guessed by now I gave this like a thousand star rating because everybody should read it if they just want to feel all the emotions. Next up I read this stunning advanced reading copy of Mirage. It is a very romance heavy sci-fi fantasy story and the setting was so so interesting for me. I just love the different aspects of the different cultures that we see. It is just such a beautiful setting. So in the story we follow our main character Amani and she is the doppelganger of the crown princess of this colonized empire. She is thrust into the court as a body double. It took me quite a while to get into the story just because there's 
a lot of action in the first two or three chapters and then we kind of have this lull in the action and the pace so it took me quite a while to get into it but I think as soon as we hit that halfway mark things start picking up and the story really accelerates really quickly the pace picks up and everything starts happening and it is fantastic the drama is great and I really really loved the romance subplot of the story the ending was fantastic I cannot wait to read the next book and next up I read one of my most anticipated releases of 2020 and that is A Heart So Fierce and Broken by Bridget Kimmerer. I gave this a 4 out of 5 star rating. I absolutely adored every second of the first book in this series and when it came to the second book it took me a while to get into it because we follow two different characters. So in this we follow Grey who we met in the first book and we also follow another character who we hadn't met before and her name is Liamara. If you read A Curse So Dark and Lonely you will know that the ending and the end chapter was completely and utterly insane and that is exactly what happened in this book as well. This is such an adventure type story where we follow a group of characters adventuring that was so stupid. <laughs> and definitely the last 100 pages of this book was extremely exciting. So, so well done. And the plot just took such a different direction. I am so excited to read the final installment in this series because I do think it is going to wrap up the series so well. And I'm so excited to see how this all ends and where my favorite characters go. Next up, I listened to the audiobook of Aurora Rising. And oh my goodness, I am so in love with this book. So in this book we follow Squad 312 as they become outlaws. The audiobook has a full cast of characters and the voice acting is phenomenal. Listening to the audiobook was such an amazing experience. The story and the plotline was brilliant and there was not a single moment where the story lagged or where I lost interest. The characters are fantastic. My friend told me that even though she does not cry, even she teared up at the end of Aurora Rising. And I am such, I am a crier, I am. When it comes to books and TV series and movies, I am a crier. So at the end of Aurora Rising, I was just listening to the audiobook, lying on my bed and crying. It just shows you how much these characters got to me and how much I really love them. I love these sci-fi space elements and I genuinely think this is one of the best sci-fi books I have read probably ever. It is so so good and I loved every single moment of it. Next up I listened to the audiobook for Down Among the Sticks and Bones by Shannon Maguire and I absolutely adored the first book and the second one follows characters we'd already met in the first book and we follow Jack and Jill. We see their journey to and from the world that they are taken to in this very interesting series, we follow children who are given access through doorways into different worlds and it is just such a fantastic and unique and brilliantly heartwarming story. And only if you've read them would you understand this, but they feel like home and they make you feel accepted and loved. In the second one, we follow two sisters and their twins and this is quite interesting because wow, it is such a messed up story. I just loved every single minute of this book and once again it just felt like home. They're, they're in my soul and they're part of me and they are just so absolutely amazing. Next up I listened to another audiobook which was All the Stars and Teeth by Adeline Grace and I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. This was such a fun, fun story. We had lots of magic and we had pirates and we had a mermaid and it was just such a fun story. We follow a princess and she kind of messes up a little bit and has to run from her own empire because of it. We have this really intense ending. I'm really really excited for the next book to come out because I feel like it is going to be so good. The magic in this world was so interesting and unique. The magic definitely gave the plot that extra element of beauty and awesomeness. The plot itself was so exciting and I loved listening to this story. And the next book that I read was To All the Boys I Loved Before and I gave this a four and a half out of five stars. 
So I absolutely loved listening to the audiobook and I realized that listening to audiobooks of contemporaries are actually much easier than listening to the audiobooks of fantasy. Obviously the books have a lot more details that we don't see in the movie. I think one of the main things that I loved the most about this book, other than the very cute cuteness and romance, I really really loved the sisters and the sisterly dynamic between the Song sisters. Their dynamics and the things that happen in this household are so realistic to sisters I like the romance and it was a good and cute book. I don't read contemporary often but I really really did enjoy this. And next up I read Ash Princess by Laura Sebastian. This was such a good book. I did not realize how much I was going to enjoy it until I finished it. Oh my goodness the drama and the intrigue in this book are absolutely insane. The story is really really interesting and there's like this little bit of a love triangle that starts happening but I really really excited to see where it goes. Our main character Theodosia, we call her Theo for short, she is very strong and she grows into herself quite a lot in this book. The magic in this world is so interesting. We have kind of elemental magic but it is all spurred on by these gems that are found in the mines that are blessed by the gods. We have this foreign court who have invaded and taken over and we basically follow Theo as she navigates court and really starts finding her own identity. Theo is so so strong and she has been through a lot in her lifetime but she continues to rage on and she is such an inspiring character. I really really love that about her. The history and just the country in general is really interesting and I really love the world and the world building. I cannot wait to continue this series. And last but certainly not least I read Captive Prince by C.S. Picat. I gave this book a four out of five stars now I went into this book with so many preconceived ideas about what it is about and I was so wrong on so many levels. I honestly thought it was just a romance set in a fantasy setting. It is not even that, it is so much more than that. I adore the characters. So we have Damon who is the typical warrior badass. As much as I love his character, my true favorite character character is a prince Laurent. I loved the ending of the first book. As soon as I finished Captive Prince Volume 1, I immediately started reading Captive Prince Volume 2. I'm about halfway through Captive Prince Volume 2. I did like the setup and some of the concepts we saw in the first book, but Volume 2 is so, so good. The writing can be a little bit complicated sometimes. It's not always a clear cut and you don't always 100% understand what's going on. The first book has a lot of court intrigue. There is very much a political mind game going on in the background of the story and that is quite intriguing and I really love courtly games. I think I am definitely going to absolutely adore the entire series once I am finished. I am so in love already with the second book. I cannot wait to finish it and tell you guys what I think of it. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching my recent reads video. If you like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you want more bookish content from me don't forget to click that subscribe button and I hope you have a fantastic day and a great great week.